Ah, wel dragen aan een Alpen? Oh ha! <laughs> if you thought that the only mythical creature that Scotland had to offer was the Loch Ness Monster, or Nishak Alza Gaelic, then you were mistaken. So, Scotland has a ton of mythical creatures, including dragons. Wales does not have a monopoly on dragons, y'all. Alpa. Narichen Skiahachenshaw. Haha. Welcome to my channel. This is Carl's Lingo Kingdom, and I am Carl, an American, learning Cumbrae, Nihongo, and Gaelic. And today I want to talk about the Gaelic word for dragons, the dragon clans, as well as dragon legends you can find all around Scotland. So stick around to the end because the last dragon legend has a really cool Gaelic connection. I got this idea from Thomas Mackay, a cultural writer for the Scotsman newspaper. In studying mythological creatures in Scotland, he discovered not only the existence of dragons, but also what he dubbed dragon clans. You can read his original article on the mythical creatures of Scotland by clicking the link at the end of the video. But first, let's talk about the Gaelic word for dragon. Kind of like in my intro, you could just say dragon, which is just the Gaelic version of the modern English word for dragon, but I prefer to use the traditional Gaelic term, and that is nahar skiahach. It literally means winged snake, and I just think that's so fun. Now, let's talk about dragon clans. What is a dragon clan, you ask? Well, there are at least four of what my friend Tommy likes to call dragon clans of Scotland. And so they are Seton, Maul, Crichton, and Somerville. And these are Scottish clans which have a dragon in their clan crest. And I'll talk about Somerville more in a bit, but first, let's talk about Crichton. If you're like me, then the only Crichton that you may have heard of is Michael Crichton, the one who wrote the original Jurassic Park novel. So you're telling me that Clan Crichton has a dragon in its crest, and then Michael Crichton made dinosaurs famous again. Coincidence? I think not! And of the four clans that I mentioned, Crichton is the only one of these that we know uh, where the name actually comes from Gaelic. And according to scottcrest.com, the name is a combination of the Gaelic words croich, meaning boundary, and the Scots word ten, meaning like a homestead. However, I think this website, or maybe their own source that they got this from, might have made a typo because croich uh, means gallows. It doesn't mean boundary. The Gaelic word for boundary is actually crioch, so you switch the, the I and the O, and you get Kriach. So you have Kriach tone becomes Crichton. And notice how that guttural ch, the CH, isn't pronounced anymore in the name, but it's still there in the spelling of the, the clan. Now, ain't really sure why Crichton has a dinosaur, I mean a dragon, uh, in its clan crest, but with Somerville, I think we can figure it out because Somerville, or Somerville, that name, of that clan has a really metal connection to dragons. And here's where we go into the dragon legends of Scotland. Have you ever heard of the Linton Worm? So this is a legend that goes back to the 12th century in the Scottish borders. There was a wingless type of dragon called a worm, sometimes spelled with a Y, and this worm lived in a hollow near the town of Linton. The dragon terrorized the countryside and no one could go near the beast. But a nearby laird named John Somerville came out to find the worm, and after watching it, he hatched a plan on how he could slay it. No one in the village believed that he could do it, but nevertheless, he went to the local blacksmith, had the blacksmith make like his custom lance. He got on his horse and practiced his jousting skills until he felt fully prepared, and then he went to find the beast in the hollow. He took his special lance and he put peat and tar on the point, set it on fire, and then when the dragon reared its head out of the hillside, he stabbed it through the mouth and slew it. And there was much rejoicing. <laughs> so John Somerville was knighted and became the first Baron of Linton, and to this day, Clan Somerville has a dragon on its clan crest. There's another legendary worm in Scottish mythology, the Stour Worm of Orkney. This tale is thought to have derived from Norse mythology, and it's a long story that has a king and a 
wizard and a princess, and you should check the story out for yourself. And I've got links below for you know, all the stuff I talk about. But I will say that this story, like the one in Linton uh, near Roxburgh, involves using flaming peat to slay the dragon. So I'm starting to find a theme in Scottish mythology about the power of peat, especially when it's on fire. <laughs> so this sea dragon, the sorewarm, was so ginormous that when it died and its fangs fell into the sea, they formed the Orkney, Faroe, and Shetland Islands. Our next tale takes us to Dundee, or Dunje, Amtsgalik. According to the local legend, a farmer had nine beautiful daughters, and one day he was so thirsty he asked his oldest daughter, can you just go get me some water? Down by, down by the creek, please. But after a little while, she didn't, she didn't come back. And so he said, well, that's okay. Maybe she got distracted. She was dilly-dallying or something. That's what we'd say down here, dilly-dally. Uh, so he sent his next daughter, uh, and she mysteriously didn't return either. And so he kept sending his next daughter, and next daughter, next daughter, until he discovered that all nine of his daughters had been eaten by a dragon. And so distraught, he ran down to the village and told everybody what happened, and the youngest daughter's sweetheart, uh, a blacksmith named Martin, gathered all the villagers together and led them on a hunt to slay the dragon. They finally found the dragon and he was fighting with it and they all yelled, strike Martin, strike Martin, as he was fighting the beast. And so that area is now known as Strath Martin. And the spot where the dragon supposedly uh, fell and spoke its dying words Yes, in this story, the dragon can actually speak, actually drop some, some, some rhymes, some bars. The spot where it fell is marked by a 6th century Pictish stone. If you visit Dunje today, you can not only find that Pictish stone and try to decipher the, the warrior and the, and the snake on there, but you can also find dragons everywhere in Dunje. You can find a dragon in the coat of arms uh, for Dundee. You can find a dragon, even in the, the statue of the dragon, right there in the middle of the city. For our next dragon tale, we'll head to Elin Fluch, or Heather Island, which is near Argyll. And this is a tragic story about a brave warrior, uh, his beautiful bride, and her devious mother. So, the jealous mother, Maeve, asks the warrior, Fluch mach ihli, for magical berries from a rowan tree, which are supposed to restore one's youth. Mm, trouble is... This sacred rowan tree is guarded by none other than a malevolent dragon. And I won't tell you how that story ends. You have to check it out for yourself. Now, the final story is the dragon of Glencoe. And I saved the best for last. And the reason why I say best is because this story can actually help you in your study of Gaelic. And here's why. This story comes straight out of oral traditions told in Gaelic. There was a Scottish minister named James McDougall who went around Scotland over a hundred years ago collecting these uh, fairy tales and folklore, and he wrote it all down in a book in English and in Gaelic. And so you can read the whole book online for free, or you can buy a little affordable paperback copy for yourself with my, with my Amazon link. And since every short story that's in the book has both English and Gaelic, it's really great for Gaelic learners like you and like me. So, the actual story, the dragon of Glencoe. The dragon lived in what's called in Gaelic a cut. Now this is a valley that's created by a glacier and a mountainside, and cut is actually where we get the English term for this uh, kind of land feature, quarry. So, this dragon lived uh, in the quarry and would hide on the lip of the quarry and attack travelers who were passing by. Uh, as they were traveling around the mountainside. And no one knew how to stop this dragon from killing people until a local ship captain lured the dragon out of the quarry down near the water with the smell of burning meat and then killed it with his trap made of spiky barrels. However, the dragon hardy had offspring by the time it was slain, and so that's not the end of the story. You can grab a book, like I said, with a link in the description. And those of you who are already learning Gaelic might have noticed that the word translated dragon is actually Behr. Wait a minute, Carl, I thought you said 
that the traditional Gaelic term for dragon is nahr, skiahoch, and that's true. But this other word, beher, can have several meanings. First, it can mean something wild or savage. It can mean a bolt of lightning, or it can refer to a beast, especially a serpent-like beast. So uh, the author who was translating this took the Gallic word beher, a snake-like wild beast, and translated that as dragon. So what this tells me is that Scotland has so many dragons that it's got multiple words for dragons. Huh? Huh? Mash that like button if you enjoyed this video and you want me to make uh, a companion video about Idrai Goch and any other Welsh dragons. I mean, I can't get enough dragons, so if you want to talk about Welsh dragons, just let me know. Now you know that the mythology of Scotland has more to offer than just Nishak. In addition to dragons, there are 12 other mythological critters that you can read about in Thomas Mackay's Scottish Mythical Beasts and Where to Find Them at the Scotsman that inspired this video. And you can read that article by clicking the link down in the description below.